Well, thanks, Mike. I'm thrilled to be back here at MacStock for a second year. As all of us know, we're very passionate about Apple products, and I thought it would be a great uh, topic to discuss uh, today. We will be looking at differences between the iPad Pro models and uh, could it be possibly your full-time computer? Who remembers this? That was six years ago. Uh, the iPad revolution started over six years ago when the late Steve Jobs went on stage for the first time on May 11, 2010, and there was no turning back. Who here in the audience still has an iPad 1? You still use it? No. It's not kind of not usable anymore, is it? Because uh, I think iOS 5 is the end of the road with that version. How about an iPad 2? All right, so iPad 2 is still pr pretty good. I know it's not going to be compatible anymore to iOS 10, uh, which is coming out. Um, and uh, who here has an iPad Pro? So we got, uh, we got, we got a, good, a good selection audience here. A lot of people have uh, uh, good uh, uh, items here. So who would have thought this would be the opportunity that the iPad, Pro could, the iPad Pro could possibly become your computing device? So back in March uh, in, of, of this year, the iPad Pro 9.7 inch uh, was introduced. And during that introduction, I, uh, Phil Schiller stated, there were 600 million PCs out there and, that were five years old, and this is really sad. Hmm, is it sad? He also told us, whoop, let's see if I can get this to work. He also told us that uh, the iPad Pro could be the ultimate PC replacement. Remember that, when he said that earlier this year? I don't know if it, I agree with that 100%, but this is something I want to explore today. So why the iPad Pro? Uh, there, there are two big things I found that, uh, that, that were, uh, really stand out to me and I really think that we could th th talk about today. Is it really fast enough and will it meet your daily needs? Let's uh, take a look at them side by side and find out. Sorry. So as most of you know, the iPad Pro comes in two sizes. It's a 12.9 inch model and the 9.7 inch model. The 9.7 brings all the great features of the, that was introduced to the 12.9 inch model and the iPad uh, in the 12.9 inch model with the introduction of the 9.7 inch, I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here. The 9.7 inch model of Apple also added a few more features which includes true tone display. Apple also added the amazing pencil for sketching as well as it can be used uh, as a stylus which works with the both sizes. They also introduced the smart keyboard, which I'll talk about a little later. As I mentioned, the iPad Pro comes in two sizes, and it's all about the display. Both models provide an amazing experience no matter which size you choose. These, are sc these screens are just beautiful. Let's briefly go through some of what I thought stands out of the features of both models. Now, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch uh, was, is probably one of the most powerful and is largest, yes, it is large, quickest and most powerful iPad Apple has ever made. It has the third gen A9 uh, processor, which also includes four speaker audio, which I'll discuss further in a moment, uh, up to 10 hours of battery life, and an eight megapixel iSide camera, and full size on screen keyboard, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit, plus the support of the Apple Pencil and the smart keyboard. Let's take a look at the 9.7 inch model. Well, the 9.7-inch model uh, ha has more of incredible features and includes the most advanced display. The 9.7-inch model has wide color and true tone display, as well as it supports the Apple Pencil and Smart Keyboard. They have also added an enhanced camera. It's got a 12-megapixel camera and a 5-megapixel FaceTime camera. And we know everybody we love that they put their iPads up and take pictures, right? <laughs> I think it's a little goofy, but... So what do you really think? Which model do you think is best? Well, my experience with the iPad Pro, uh, the, when the, well before the 12.inch model was released, I have the iPad Air 2. Of course, I'm an upgrader, so I always have to have the, the, the latest model, right? Uh, I was lucky enough to receive an iPad Pro 12.9-inch uh, this past, uh, last year for my 50th birthday from my family. But then the 9.7-inch model came out, and that was, when, when that was released, I really liked the amazing screen and true tone display. So <laughs> I sold off my iPad Air 2 to put cash towards the 9.7-inch mod, model, and I could not decide which one I wanted. So I kept both. Whoops, I forgot my wife's in the audience. Sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> She's okay. I have to say I really like the 12.9-inch 12, 12 model for its large size and keyboard. 
But I'm torn, the 9.7 inch model is lighter and not so bulky. So let's dig into some of the features I, I think stand out. Here are a few of the features that I found that stand out. They, these features include the true tone display, split view, picture in picture, and four speaker audio. Let me review a few of these features. The 9.7 inch model comes uh, featured with a new true tone display that uses advanced four channel ambient light, light sensors that uh, adapt to the color intensity of the display to match the light of your environment. The colors are amazing and you, and you definitely can tell the difference between the 12.9 inch model. With split view, which was introduced back in uh, iOS 8, you can go a step further and have two apps open and active at the same time. You, you can work on a sketch and a reference photo uh, beside it. Or, or you can write a paper while copying citations from a book in iBooks. Since everything you need is right there in front of you, it's easier to focus on what you're working on. Many app developers have revised these apps so that it utilizes this feature, but there are still a few out there that have not updated yet, unfortunately. Picture in picture, while using your FaceTime camera or watching a video, uh, you can press the home button and your video scales down to the, uh, to the display. Does everybody you have used that before? Is it pretty cool? I, I think some people do, sometimes people don't. It's kinda, it kind of varies. Uh, but your video continues to play while you open up a second app and you'll be able to keep watching your FaceTime conversation or re reply to emails just as they came in. Apps like Netflix, MLB at Bat, and other video apps will work with this feature. I love this feature. It is, it is cool to be able to view a video while doing other things like mail and web surfing. One thing I found that really stands out on both models is that, the, that Apple added the four speaker audio. Everybody liked that sound? I mean, I think that was such a huge improvement to that. Uh, the four speaker audio now are coming out with four speakers, and these speakers have twice the op audio output of the iPad Air 2. So it's more than two times louder than it was before. So I had the iPad Air 2, and I found that uh, the, the sound was not as good on the Air 2. And, and I, actually, did anybody have experience where it would vibrate? Because the Air 2 was, 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 was rough. This is, is this actually a huge improvement. It does have built-in sen built sensors that automatically adjust and optimize the audio when you're holding the iPad in portrait or landscape. I can tell you very much that the sound is amazing. Here is a sneak peek of iOS, a feature in iOS 10 that's going to be added only to iPads. Finally, Apple has brought the split view in Safari. You'll be able to drag a tab as it's showing here in the animation, and it'll create a split view and see the, the tab side by side. There's going to be more to this besides this one, but based on the time I have here, I just wanted to show you one of the big features I thought is, is really standing out here with this feature. I can't wait for it. This is a game changer with browsing. This new feature will give, definitely give you a better experience on the 12.9 inch model because of the larger screen. Also, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch has the large size on-screen keyboard. It's a full size on-screen keyboard that you can use very, very much with ease. As you can see, the keyboard looks like a regular full size keyboard with all the keys in one place instead of having to access uh, alternate menus, menus. You always find it difficult when you're, when you're doing that with keyboard. Sometimes it's hard to be able to have to access that menu because you have to tap a few more keys. It's really nice to have that full screen on, this, on, the, on the actual screen. There are some great accessories with, uh, with the iPad Pro. I wanted to review a few of them that, that, that I thought stood out. The iPad Pencil is absolutely amazing. It was introduced at the same time as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The, the great thing about the Pencil is it also works with the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Here are some of the features that I think stand out. Low latency, which is, uh, which is response time, so it's very responsive. Uh, it has forts and tilt sensors and precision, uh, and precision that makes it feel like you're actually using a pencil. And I can tell you it does feel like a pencil. I, th I saw a few people here who had a pencil. Don't you think that's very, very uh, uh, precision when you are using it? All right. Pairing the pencil is very simple, too. All you have to do is remove the cap, uh, plug, it into, uh, plug it into the lightning connector on your iPad Pro, and it's all done via Bluetooth. The pencil lasts for about 12 hours of battery life, and it's perfect for all-day use. Uh, if you run out of power, you plug it into the iPad Pro for 15 seconds and you get about 30 minutes of use. So it is, it is quick to get it charged if you are in a pinch. The smart keyboards. The smart keyboards were designed for just the iPad Pro models. The keyboard is much smaller on the 9.7 inch, which some people find it to be a bit awkward versus the, versus the 12.9 inch, which is a full size keyboard. And I can attest to it by having both. It, it, it is really tiny. It, you really cramp down on the keyboard by using that. 
Uh, the Lightning to USB uh, 3 camera adapter is another great accessory that was added. Uh, and I think it's a great adapter. It, it, the name is deceiving. This adapter can do a lot more than just connect your camera. The adapter includes a USB connector and a lightning connector, the power devices that are plugged in, plugged into it. For all you podcasters out there, this will allow you to power up mics from your iPad Pro with ease. And you could do a podcast right from your iPad. You don't have to have your laptop with you. And I'm sure a few people here have been, have been doing that. So I think it's an absolutely awesome device. Also, transferring videos is absolutely amazing and lightning fast. You can, you can transfer a couple gigabytes of, data of, of videos from a USB thumb drive right to the iPad, and it goes very quickly. Uh, a disadvantage of the 9.7-inch model, which I still don't understand why Apple did this, is that the, the transfer speeds on the 9.7-inch model is only two, USB 2.0, so it is a little slow. So which size should you use? The 12.9 inch model is about the same size of two 9.7 inch models put side by side, pretty close. You would need to decide which screen is best for you. If you use the pen Apple Pencil frequently for sketching and drawing, I think the 12.9 inch model would be a good choice because of the larger screen. However, you definitely feel a difference in weight and I found the 12.9 inch model to be a bit bulky. If, you, if smaller size is important to you, the 9.7 inch model should meet your needs. You, you definitely need to decide what's best for your application. Here are some other factors that are, are also involved with the iPad Pro that would, be, that would be best for you. The faster port on the 12.9 inch model, as I talked about earlier, that takes advantage of the USB 3.0 accessories from Apple, including a speedy lightning to SD card adapter, which I didn't talk about, which gives you a direct connection from your camera, taking an SD card in and plugging right into it, uh, as, well as, the, uh, as well as having the USB 3 camera adapter, which I talked about earlier. Uh, the, of course, the 9.7 inch model will only run in USB 2.0 speeds, which is slower. The other thing I, uh, we did see is that for some reason the 12.9 inch model has 4 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the 9.7 inch has 2 gigabytes of RAM. So why would you think they wouldn't be the same? It kind of seems kind of strange. But, you know, it, it, it is a little slower. You will notice a little bit of difference. Not huge, but that's where your factor is going to be what you think you're going to decide. What, which size do you really want? Well, I think the 12.9 inch model will give you the biggest bang for your buck. The question is, could the 12.8 inch model, could be your laptop or replacement? Let's explore that further. So now we've decided which size iPro is best for you. Did we decide that? I don't know. I, I, I think, hard to say. Who here has a 12.9 inch now? You like it? You like it? And who has the 9.7 inch model? A few of you, okay. So it's kind of a mix. It really gives you, a, 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 really you gotta decide, is that bigger size worthwhile for you as your primary device? Well, what I can say is, I've tried it with that in mind. So here are some of the, uh, here are some of the things that I find would be of use for you in the iPad Pro and could be, and you could find it more than adequate for, for a full-time computing device. In my experience, I can, I can use, this as my jo use this at my job. I can use this crashing numbers on spreadsheets. I can scan photos and documents with ease. I can type a memo. I also can find it to be very easy to print a document and to be able to share my screen while doing presentations. I'm finding more and more productive, pro productive uses with the iPad Pro all the time. So here's some of the basic computing needs. You can easily browse the internet on an iPad Pro just as you would as a Mac. Uh, the core browser is Safari, but there also I'm, I was very excited to see that Firefox was released. There's a Firefox app as well as a Google Chrome app for browsing. And they work just as, just as about the same as they do as being on a Mac. Email also works the same. We all live in email. But there are also some great third-party apps that uh, you could uh, use, which I'm going to mention in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, the Apple Notes app. Everybody here use the Apple Notes app? Wow, what, a, what an amazing improvement it's had over the last, uh, the last update. Uh, it, uh, being able to take notes as well as having the ability to utilize it, the pencil, you can do written notes on, in notes, which I think is just amazing. And sketching is also a big plus. You can also insert photos into notes. There are also, there are also some third party uh, apps as well for taking notes. Um, and uh, let's, speaking of that, let's, let's uh, talk about what the best apps are out there for productivity. There's so many of them. Load this up, you'll see it. it's just flashing up here. There's just so many to choose from. Um, here are some of the ones that I think that stand out. 
Uh, the categories I used included word processing, spreadsheets, presentations, email, notes, scanning, PDF management, and password management. Let's start with Office for iOS. Anybody here use Office for iOS? A few of you. Well, it does have some, Microsoft did an amazing job of developing these apps just for, just about emulating everything that they had on the Mac version. But one thing of note is, and I think that's what a lot of people don't like, is the fact that you do have to pay for it. You have to have an Office 365 subscription. But if you are, if you are an Office user, I think it's, it, it's, it's a great experience being able to use uh, that application. Now on the other side, we've got the iWork uh, suite, which includes Keynote, Numbers, and Pages, which is all free when you buy the iPad Pro. Now as you see, as you see uh, I'm using Keynote, and who here uses Keynote and, and Pages? versus Office. You got, I think, all of us being the Apple lovers we are, I think we stay in the ecosystem. I tell you, the Keynote is a, is a great, great presentation piece of software. I always struggle with PowerPoint when I'm doing presentations, so. Um, Google Docs has another option. That's an also a free option that, that, that provides word processing, spreadsheets, and presentations. So you have that, you have that choice as well, doing it online. Not, not as much of a flex, not as much flexibility as the other two suites. Um, for email, of course, you have uh, the standard email app that's built in, and there's so many other apps out there, but I wanted to call it the one that Microsoft released, the Microsoft Out Outlook for iOS. Anybody use Outlook for iOS? A couple of you? It's, uh, it is pretty powerful, and it does have a, a, some advanced productivity. It kind of keeps, helps you keep yourself organized. Two of the features that stand out on that app is, includes a focused, man, uh, focused mailbox, and also it integrates the calendar within the Outlook app, whereas when you're using Apple Mail, you have to use the Apple Mail, and then you have to go out to go to the calendar, so that was one of the bonus things it has. For scanning, you got Scanner, Scanner Pro 7 by Riedel. I think Riedel makes some absolutely amazing products on iOS. Uh, this is a great tool for capturing paper documents and photos, which uh, scan them right into the app for easy sharing to a document. Riedel also makes the app called PDF Expert. I think by far is one of the best PDF uh, managers out there, gives you file management capabilities, PDF editing, and signing forms that you share when you have to sign something and send off to, to others. Of course, I, for notes, I, I mentioned Apple, Apple uh, Notes earlier. There is another great app out there called Notable for note taking that also has built in audio dictation. Microsoft OneNote, they have another notes app that is really an excellent note taking app, and it's becoming more and more of a mainstream popular uh, item. I work in the enterprise, so they're, they're using OneNote more and more. In, in our work, well, I think it does a great job of integrating with the Office uh, iOS suite. Last but certainly not least is uh, the password, the, one of the best password manager apps out there, One Password. Anybody here use One Password? Oh my God, the whole room uses it. That's awesome. Uh, what, what, a, what a great application, and I think it's by far one of the best out there to manage passwords. And we, we, we live in the world of passwords, and we, we got to be able to manage these passwords all the time. And I tell you, it keeps you productive, and it's so easy to be able to interface between your iOS device as well as your Mac. Also out there, there's many great apps for graphic design. A lot of folks out there probably do a lot of photo editing, graphic design. I could spend 20 minutes alone talking about all the amazing apps that are out there for, for doing camera and photo editing as well as uh, uh, photo management. Adobe has done a great job of being, uh, as bringing a lot of their applications out there to the suite, including uh, Photoshop Express for good basic photo editing and Lightroom for photo management. The great thing about Lightroom is Lightroom does sync with your Mac, so you can, you can keep it in, in sync if you have to do that. But again, we're trying to decide, do you want to be disconnected to your Mac? Do you want to still be able to, uh, do you want to be able to use just your iPad as your primary device? But as you see on the other apps that are up there, Adobe does an amazing job of providing other apps for photo editing and others that they do, and Adobe has a great suite. Air, AirPrint and AirPlay have been, an on, have been a, great, a great feature on iOS for many years, and I can tell you the, the, the features that it provides in both is just tremendous value uh, for iOS devices, including the iPad Pro. Being able to easily print any document right from an iPad Pro to a wireless printer is just awesome. And everybody here has got to have a, a printer that's within the last few years, you know, five, six years, if you have a, a, a printer that is available for Wi-Fi, is going to give you some uh, a great t time as far as being able to print. Also, being able to stream devices like the Apple TV provide you uh, provide a presentation that's, uh, that lets me do what I'm doing right now. I'm able to be able to present from an iPad right to a screen. So. 
That would be another reason why it could be a full-time device. So this, this slide here is a lot of information, but I thought I, would, be, it sh I should review some of the pros and some of the cons. I'll go through this really quickly. Some of the highlights include being able to do basic computing, office productivity, that's a pro, graphic design. The pencil and smart keyboard option is another great pro. You'll, you can also use a Bluetooth keyboard if you don't want to use the smart keyboard, so you do have the option to be able to do that. The sound is amazing with the four speakers that are now added to it. It's a very amazing, and last and certainly not least, it, uh, it does have a great res has great resolution on the screen. Some of the cons include the learning curve and workflow adjustment. That could take a little time to get getting used to if you're not if you're not real uh, clear of having to use this device right away. Um, the smart keyboard is is a little small on the 9.7 inch model, so it's going to give you a little bit of a struggle. I did find that the smart keyboard is not very stable on your lap, so you might think of that factor if you're using the smart keyboard. Um, but the 12.9 inch model, it can be a little heavy and awkward if you're not used to something that large. A USB connection has, uh, has the USB connection for that has a future with the fast speeds. Um, as well as, uh, on, uh, as well as the, the, the one thing of the con was the 9.7 inch, if you went with that model, it's a little bit slower in performance. So my final thoughts and wrap up here. For a, for a casual user, I think the iPad Pro could very well be all that you need. So if you're a casual user, you're doing web surfing, email, uh, basic stuff, I think the iPad would be perfect. You know, I've got family members that have been using the iPad just for that reason, and they're absolutely happy with that and not having to have a laptop. For working professionals, I'm not sure, sure that they can go all in and be able to make this their daily driver for a work, as a work professional. Uh, for artists and creativity professionals, I think the iPad Pro could, could slowly work into its, their workflows, uh, but it will all depend on, heavily on uh, software tools and what is developed in the future. And for podcasters, the expansion of the USB connector is an absolute plus. That's actually a setup of a picture of someone who had set up with their microphone ready to do a podcast. Well, that was the iPad Pro. I'm on Twitter at uh, DaveG65 if anybody wants to reach out to me. I'm also on the podcast with Mike Potter, the formateguysonly.com. You can find me on there as well. And I'm the president of the Mac user group here, so you come see us on our website at mycau.org. Thank you.